Inflation is here. According to the Consumer Price Index report published on June 10th, 2021, the CPI for all items increased by a whopping 5% over the last 12 months. This is the largest increase we've seen since August of 08, basically 13 years. Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me in today's video. Let's dive right in and talk about inflation. Inflation is a bad, bad, scary word. Even thinking about inflation gives people shivers and for good reason. The last time that the United States saw some big inflation numbers was in late 70s and early 80s with inflation rising to over 10%. Unemployment was also high with rates above 10% for a long time. People were scared and people were unhappy and it took some drastic measures to be able to rein in inflation and get back to a period of sustained growth. So what is inflation? According to Investopedia.com, inflation is defined as the decrease in buying power of a given currency over time. To understand this, let's consider an example. Let's say you have $10 and you can use these $10 to buy 10 Snickers bars. Now I know the picture says 88 cents, but let's add tax and say that the Snicker bar costs you $1. So you can buy 10 Snickers bars today using $10. Now, if next year the price of Snickers bar increases and you can only buy nine Snickers bars with the same $10, well, you're seeing inflation. Since you are able to buy less chocolate next year with the same amount of money, you are seeing inflation in the chocolate market. Guys, before we continue, I want to take a second to ask you to please smash that like button and that subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. This helps me out a lot and motivates me to keep making these videos. That being said, let's get back to today's discussion. Believe it or not, inflation is actually desirable in our economy in small amounts. In fact, over the last two decades or so, the US has seen inflation ranging between 2 and 4%. In fact, the dual mandate of the Federal Reserve has price stability as one of its mandates. So the Fed works really hard to keep inflation at this level. A sustained and stable inflation rate can provide for low unemployment, relatively stable wage growth, and overall growth in the economy. However, we do not want runaway inflation or deflation, both of which can have some pretty adverse effects on our economy. So, how do we measure inflation? One popular index to measure inflation is called the CPI or Consumer Price Index, which is published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics within the Department of Labor. Once again, according to Investopedia.com, CPI is defined as a measure of the weighted average of prices of a basket of consumer goods and services. What does this mean? This means that the value of a variety of stuff that people buy is tracked year over year. If the price of a certain set of goods and services increases from one year to the next, we have inflation. If it decreases, we have deflation. Pretty straightforward. Let us now take a look at the table from the inflation report published on June 10th. Like I said before, you can see pretty clearly here that the CPI for all items increased by 5% since last May. Now let's take a closer look at some of the individual line items under this. We can see that food prices went up about 2.2%, used vehicles went up by 29.7%, and gas went up by a whopping 56.3%. I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely felt this when filling up at the gas station. A year ago, I was paying less than $2 a gallon to fill up gas at the gas station, and now I'm paying more than $3. We can also see that the CPI for the 12-month period ending in April had increased by 4.1%, and for the 12-month period ending in May has increased by 5%. So we're seeing an increase in the rate of increase of CPI. If inflation keeps rising at increasing rates, we're going to see higher prices for everyday stuff. And if our incomes don't keep up with this increase, people are going to see big problems in their everyday lives. This can be a huge problem for the economy and everybody involved since this can cause a real lowering in our standards of living. So are we going to see sustained increased inflation or is this just a blip that's going to settle down in a few months? Well, both the chair of the Fed, Jerome Powell, and the secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, have come out and said that this is only temporary inflation and they expect things to calm down in the next few months. The rationale behind this thinking is this. The prices for a lot of commodities like gas, for example, have increased a lot, which had originally decreased a lot due to lower demand last year. So a lot of this increase in pricing is just more of a return to normal. 
Another big driver of this high CPI is the cost or price of used cars. What's the reason behind this? If you've kept up with the news lately, you know that there is a chip shortage, a computer chip shortage that goes into these cars. What happened about a year ago is that car manufacturers forecasted a drop in demand for new cars. So they canceled orders for all of these computer chips that go into these cars. Consequently, chip manufacturers lowered their production capacity. Well, what happened next is pretty interesting. The demand for new cars came back much faster and stronger than any car manufacturers thought it would. So now they've had to increase their orders for these chips. But because chip manufacturing is a complex process that takes a lot of time, there is a shortage of chips in the market. So car manufacturers have had to slow down production of new cars or even shut down some production lines at this time. Because of this, new cars are not as easily available in the market, so the price of used cars has gone up a lot. Since this is a basic supply and demand issue, people are expecting that this issue will smoothen out over the next few months as supply matches up to the demand. This should cause the prices of these things that have risen so dramatically, like cars, to go back down to their usual levels. Add a few more similar stories to the mix and you can start seeing why Janet Yellen or Jerome Powell might say that this is a temporary blip in increased inflation and things will calm down after a while. If this turns out to be true and inflation goes back to that 2-4% to range, that's very good news for everybody and hopefully we can go back to a normal period of sustained growth over the long term. On the other hand, if inflation remains high or increases to an even higher level, then we could be in for some real pain. Typically, if this happens, the Fed pumps the brakes in the economy to slow things down a little and calm everything down. One of the ways that the Fed does this is to increase interest rates. Currently, the federal interest rate is about 0.25%, which is actually the rate that banks use to lend each other money, typically in overnight trading. While this typically has no real impact on everyday Americans' lives, we are also seeing historically low interest rates, for example, on mortgages. A 30-year mortgage interest rate is still hovering about 3% and 15 years around 2%. That's incredible. Since interest rates are low across the board, it encourages people and more importantly businesses to borrow more money and spend more money to fuel more growth. If inflation starts increasing very rapidly, the Fed could increase its benchmark interest rate from 0.25% to something higher, which would cause a ripple effect across the entire lending economy. This would cause interest rates for businesses to go high, which might cause some businesses to tone down on their spending and their borrowing, which should bring down inflation and cool things down a bit, which is exactly what the Fed would want to do if inflation starts rising much more rapidly for a longer time. However, this can be an unpopular decision both with individuals and with businesses. As interest rates rise, it becomes less and less desirable for businesses and individuals to borrow more money. In fact, it can even cause a rise in unemployment if businesses decide that they don't want to hire any new people or even lay off some of the people that they currently have. So this is a tool that the Fed has and certainly can use, but it's probably not a tool that they want to use prematurely. When the Fed does increase interest rates, they are more than likely going to do it slowly in small incremental steps rather than all at once to make sure that they don't freak out the market. Already, the Fed has announced that they will start rolling back some of the easy money policies that they had instituted last year. Last year, they had announced that they would be using $700 billion to buy government bonds and even corporate bonds to provide some liquidity in the US market. Now, they've announced that they will slowly start selling these bonds back onto the market to get them off the Fed's balance sheet. As to what I think, I do think that the increase in inflation that we are seeing is temporary. I tend to agree with what the Fed is saying, that businesses are more willing to borrow and spend more money. They're more willing to pay more to hire new employees. They're willing to branch out into new markets. They're more willing to develop new products and services and are generally more willing to take on new risk. And they're doing this because this is easily fueled by cheap and easily available credit. As the economy recovers more and everything starts to reopen again, free market forces will take root and tend to balance things out. We're going to see lower spending by businesses as well as consumers, which should lower the inflation rates that we are seeing right now. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this video useful, entertaining and interesting. 
If you did, please go ahead and smash that like button and that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified instantly when I post a new video. I post at least one new video every week with great new financial content and I would love to see you back here. Also, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. I will leave the handles down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.